This is the first of two uh, test review podcasts. I haven't separated them by general multiple choice and image base, although that is how the test will be set up. Instead, I've separated them into Greece and Rome. Well, there are some dates on the test. Don't get mad at me. Every test question you're getting is an actual AP test question from a past year, although, of course, the exam has changed somewhat. They do seem to be wanting you to know some dates. I'm not going to tell you exactly which dates you need to know, but I will drop some hints. The Archaic period is basically the 6th and 7th centuries. The Classical period is basically the 5th century, BCE. Remember how those centuries work. You go up a number. We recently finished the 20th century with all the dates in the 1900s, right? The 5th century is the high point of Greece, from the defeat of the Persians in 478 BCE to Athens' defeat in the Peloponnesian Wars in 404 BCE. Don't memorize those dates, but do remember the 5th century. The late Classical and early Hellenistic periods are 4th century, and the rest of BCE is Hellenistic up to the defeat of the last Macedonian Empire at the Battle of Actium. Then it's on to Rome and the next podcast. So what kind of vessel is this, and what was it primarily used for? Note this was not a required image. It's from an earlier AP test, but you should recognize the shape and the red figure technique. You could easily get a question like this on the actual exam. They will use non-required images similar to the required images quite often. Most Greek paintings have not survived, and those that have survived are mostly found where? Really, entirely found where? This photo gives you the answer. And if you think about it, it's the only kind of Greek painting that you've seen, in painting form at least. So, this slide should be self-explanatory. These are some of the general questions. Here are some more. Oops, no labels, just as there are no labels on the AP image. But, actually the question tells you that this is the Athenian Agora. So, what was its primary function? What were the major buildings in the Agora? And specifically, what is that round building called? Hint, it's the same name as the similar shaped building on the second story of the treasury at Petra. What do those gray paths represent? And what purpose did this path serve? Where did it begin and end? What is a stoa? What is the building complex that I've circled in purple and then shown where it is on the larger plan? And what function did it serve? So, what are these two works? And hint, the one on top is Hellenistic Greek, and the one on bottom is Late Roman. So, these are both late works from within their respective periods. What content do they have in common? A related question, the work on the upper left is probably an allegory for... You read an article about this. Uh, it's the political role that Gigantomachy played in this culture. So, what are these terms? Uh, these works, excuse me, including the Greek terms for male and female archaic statues. How do the males and females differ? That one's real obvious. What was the function of the male statue? What did the male statue have in common with Egyptian sculpture? And I've included one to make that easy. So, remember the guy getting strangled by snakes along with his two kids? This is no longer a required work, which I find baffling, but it showed up as an image in two past AP tests, and I think it's quite possible it would show up again as a generic question about Greek art or even about the Italian Renaissance and Baroque periods, which this sculpture strongly influenced. So, what story is this work telling? When was the sculpture made and in what period? What characteristics of this period does the sculpture reveal? What's it made of? By the way, the answer is almost always the same with Greek and Roman sculpture, which makes life so much easier. How does it make use of space? And while you're at it, make sure you understand the concept of negative or empty space and the difference between additive and subtractive sculpture. Do you see any classical repose here? I don't, hint, hint. What I see is a lot of movement and dynamism. Diagonals, all typical of that period. So, you need to know these two temples. They're both College Board required works. Once you've identified your buildings, and yes, these will be the images on the test, you will need to review your dates. Basically, you need to know the century. We've just talked about this. You also need to know your architectural orders and your basic architectural terms. When and why were these buildings constructed on the Acropolis? 
who were their architects? Yes, there are hard names on this test. So what are the terms for sculptural figures that take the place of the column? The erechtheon, which is shown on the upper left, is no longer a required image, but it is a famous part of the Acropolis, and it's shown up on an awful lot of previous AP exams, so I recommend you know this. Note that there is a different term for female and male statuary used as columns. One of these will be the correct answer, and so this, this unit is on Greece and Rome, not Egypt, as on the bottom right. You can probably guess which one. Okay, you do need to know the difference between your architectural orders. Pay attention to the capitals. That's the easiest way to tell. The architrave, frieze, and cornice are the three elements that form the entablature. That's complicated enough. It's a question from an old AP exam, and I just gave you the answer. A reward for watching this. Basically, the entablature is all the stuff between the columns and the triangular pediment under the roof. You will also need to know that name. That is the triangular area formed by the roof and the cornice. I think you'd be wise to know triglyphs and metopes, which appear on Doric order temples. Uh, in Ionic temples, they're replaced by a continuous frieze. They don't show up on this test. They could very easily show up on the AP exam. So what's this work? What was its function? What period and century? And what story is it telling? It shouldn't be tough, I hope, to figure out why the College Board paired these two sculptures. If you don't know, find out. As always, you want to know when and in what era they were made. What story are they telling? What is the subject of the works, especially the work on the right? Make sure you know what the Greek word in the title actually means. Where were they placed? What artistic techniques do you observe? And what do they have in common stylistically? What do they demonstrate especially clearly? And by the way, I think you'll be able to answer those questions pretty easily just by looking at the images. So again, in what art historical period was this sculpture made? What were some specific techniques that the artist used to add realism to the statue? I think a very likely AP question. This is harder, I think. What are these figures, and why are they on the pediment of the Parthenon? Hint, what is this particular pediment celebrating? Where are we, and what culture does this represent? What kind of site is this? How did it function? What is the term for that raised platform, and what was its use or function? On the bottom left, whom do the figures in the frieze represent? Furthermore, the modeling on these figures shows the influence of what other culture? Hint, look at the draperies or clothing, and think about a culture that we know this culture came into close, very close contact with. What would have covered these friezes in the past? Note, this is true of the friezes in Egypt, in Greece, and in Rome. You're very likely to get a question like this about any of these cultures, and you've seen the garish reconstructions, right? Okay, I stuck this in the Greek review because of its subject, but where was it actually found, and in what art historical period? Why would the owner of this house have displayed this kind of work? I think you'll be able to figure out the answer, so I'm not offering more of a hint than that. What's happening in this scene? By using more than a million small tiles, what was the artist able to accomplish artistically? Again, I think you'll be able to figure out the answer. What was probably the original inspiration of this work, now lost? What techniques were used to give the work a three-dimensional perspective? Uh, and here's a hint. Take a look at the horses, particularly really the horses behind. What purpose did that technique serve artistically? What impression did it, did it help to create? And again, I think you'll be able to figure out the answer from the question.